Hey, it's God's Comic Brad Stein, and today we're going to be talking about social media trolls. <laughs> you know who you are, Tim. 777. So, I'm going to save you some time. Go ahead and leave all your hate-filled comments now. Perfect. Thanks. Hey, it's God's Comic Brad Stein, and for all you out there who thinks, oh, he's trying to copy all these other comics, let me give you a little background on me to show how ignorant you are. I've been doing comedy for 30 years, and uh, I started out in what is affectionately known by comics as hell gigs. <laughs> these usually amounted to local dive bars that thought an easy way to make some quick money was to pick one night out of the week that was usually reserved for the local patrons to stab each other over a girl or bash each other with a bottle over an insult, or punch each other in the face over picking the wrong song on the jukebox to have a comedy night. Ah, that's right. They still had jukeboxes in these places because it was essential in order to maintain the carefully crafted feng shui ambiance of these establishments that they permanently trapped their patrons in the year 1978. Though I've been doing comedy over 30 years, I only recently began to understand the necessity to utilize social media in order to make my material known to the general public. My daughter, God bless her, she was the one to inform me of this new means of communication because to millennials and below, that's literally the only way they actually know how to communicate now. They only know computers and phones, archaic primitive tools like a pen or paper or a typewriter would be foreign and frightening to them and cause anxiety, nausea, diarrhea. Modern technology's made life so simple for these kids that if the internet ever went down for even an hour, we'd watch these otherwise healthy children suddenly begin to slaughter each other and eat the remains. It'd make Lord of the Flies seem like a bedtime story. Seriously, kids 20 and younger have zero experience in problem solving. As a matter of fact, if I was drowning and the only way to save me was for my daughter to try to figure out how to read information from a book, my wake would be this Tuesday. I knew uh, she must be on to something, though, because when she came to me and asked when I started doing comedy, apparently she stumbled upon one of my comedy bits, shared to her from a stranger's Instagram account from a routine I did in 2002. There is nothing more disheartening to a baby boomer and to realize that after all these years, the majority of Americans still have no idea who you are. Gee, thanks, modern technology, and I was just getting used to my flint tools. But now that I have joined the modern age, it's hysterical to see what I'm up against. Not only can people watch your material for the first time, but they can comment on it as well. Oh, what an uplifting society we've become, huh, folks? I mean... I don't think I realized how many insults were available from all points of the globe. <laughs> sure, I'm making the thousands of new fans, but for others, apparently, this is their nirvana. Finally, people can hurl insults and malice towards others while safely hiding in their parents' basement, waiting for an allowance to be slipped under the door so they can buy a bag of industrial-strength Cheetos and a couple cans of Monster Energy drink and get to work demeaning people that have actually accomplished something. Because my point of view comes from a Christian conservative patriot worldview, apparently I'm the perfect candidate for what has come affectionately known as trolls. My fans often ask me, why do you keep the troll commentary on my threads up when some are so nasty and vicious? Well, I've got a couple reasons why I think everyone should leave troll comments on their feet. Number one, if they're responding to me, apparently I've hit a nerve. I mean, I'm scary to them and... Although in the past, people like this would stay clear of people they disagree with because, well, they were tired of getting beat up in gym class. Nowadays, anyone can insult anyone without repercussions. Anyone that maligns another human being knowing that nothing can happen to them for their insults is obviously a coward. So why not leave their comments up as they're admitting to the world that they're spineless? Come on! 
Folks, that's the ultimate irony, as they don't see how stupid they appear. It's like watching an internet version of Fight Club while children that think they're clever keep punching themselves in the face. <laughs> Plus, they seem to constantly confuse me with a news anchor as opposed to satire, comedy, and, of course, my own point of view. They want to bring attention to themselves by getting on my site that actually has fans as opposed to their site, which amounts to, oh, 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 my bad. They don't have one. They hate me but need my career to feel like they have worth. Dude, if you need me to feel significant, may I suggest you try another avenue. I'm still working out my own salvation with fear and trembling. I don't have time to be responsible for your insecurities. I have also come to realize that if you stand for something, I mean anything, without compromise, you're going to be hated. I have haters. I have haters. Never made sense to me insulting people I disagree with. When I see or hear someone I don't agree with, I just move on. That used to be called live and let live. It actually made for a civil society. Nowadays, it's crucial for some people to make sure you know how much you hurt their feelings, even when they chose to engage you. Seriously? How badly have you not thought something through that you choose to engage in a duel and then whine because you got shot. Move on, create your own blog site or YouTube channel or Instagram page or whatever else flavor of the month pouty mouth pictorial you're sending into the atmosphere seeking validation. Of course, I actually feel sorry for these folks. I mean, they know they're trolls and they're proud of it. Forgetting the fact that trolls historically lived under bridges, were ugly and frightening, and often had the townsfolk come after them with pitchforks and torches, driving them into the next town where they could be despised yet again. America, wouldn't it be neat if we used our disagreements to seek some kind of dialogue? How about engaging those you disagree with? With, with facts, actual facts, and perspectives that might bring some light to a subject as opposed to heat. Or better yet, why not find someone you like and say nice things to them? Lord knows we could use some uplifting in an age of hopelessness brought on by the post-truth philosophy. So, if you want to comment on me, feel free. But remember, I'm a comedian. I'm taking liberties for the funny, but maybe. Just maybe you could try to explore ideas you differ with me in a civil manner. If not, it's a free country for now. So hate away, at least if you don't mind looking like an idiot. Who am I to judge? You're doing a fine job doing it to yourself. This is God's comic, Brad Stein. And remember, PC free is liberty. Hey guys, it's Brad Stein. I know what you're saying. Brad Stein's here and he's got his own channel. I guess they give channels to everybody. Even the guys that started out in the olden days. <laughs> I never went anywhere. I was just spending years in fasting and praying for your souls in sackcloth and ashes until the Lord said, Go forth and teach them to like and subscribe to my channel. Hitteth the notification of belleth to receive the updates. That's right, I'm doing it in King James. Get over yourself. Watch one of these videos before I hunt you down. <laughs>